and good morning it's finish up the garden day I write a lot about the raised rows I make these are all new not going to be the most productive this year it takes like everything else you got to have a long-term plan for your garden and as it ages the better it gets these are eggplant <laughs> if you ever want to know if you have flea beetles on your property plant an eggplant and the flea beetles will come out of the woodwork for a mile around to chew on them several ways to deal with that neem oil one of them diatomaceous earth not takes too long I make no secret I use seven spray I've got no problem with seven it you spray it on it stays active 24 to 48 hours and that breaks down into a completely harmless inert substance that's a big steaming pile of crap we're going to talk about crap in a minute first we're going to talk about tiller this is my old four stroke manis this is probably the best tiller I've ever bought you can work a good sized garden with just it I use it for cultivating at one point I had four of them I won't buy the two strokes they uh, they don't impress me but these four strokes they just keep going and going and going and they're just monsters the way I'm making these raised rows I'm using a six foot box blade and pulling the top soil out to, and then I put the topsoil with the little Kubota bucket in these rows put a layer of manure on the bottom and I put soil on top underneath the manure there's a bunch of wood sticks and half rotten logs stuff like that I got a lot of sticks in my soil that's good stuff I don't mind dealing with it and hitting it with the tiller every now and then and having to pull a chunk out of the tines. It, uh, the row of wood I got, and then a row of manure, then the topsoil on top. I'll occasionally pull a piece of wood up, and but that that's that's fertilizer for decades to come as that wood breaks down and rots underneath there plants pull it up to the surface my friend Payson knows the word for it because he always says it every time I post something about this I can't remember the name it's just what I've always done manure let's talk a little bit about the manure if you're not making your own hay or do not 100% know how the hay you're producing or is the hay you're feeding your livestock is being produced you run a very real risk of poisoning your garden there's a, a herbicide that pretty much everybody is spraying on their hay fields now it's called Grazon it's a persistent chemical it it will stay in your soil for 10 years there's some grasses you can plant that will suck the soil suck the graze on out of the soil over two to four years to where it's not killing your vegetables but it is a persistent broadleaf killer which means it pretty much all your garden plants are broadleafs and it will kill them 
deform them, make them ugly, unproductive, just, it, it, in my opinion, Grayson's a something concocted in the depths of hell by the most vile demons. I've had friends that had to literally take a wheel loader, take all the soil out of their garden, bring semi loads of topsoil in, and refill their garden with the trucked in topsoil because the grazon that they spread with their compost and manure made their soil poison. My tomato plants, I just finished, well, I cultivated this with a little pillar. I need to take the stirrup hoe and go between plants and go over it again. Being fresh, it's got lots of weed seeds and grass seeds and clover seeds and it takes about oh, a good four or five years to, of cultivating to get all that worked out of it if you stay on top of it. I got something going on in the soil over here. I'm suspecting this is made up, it'd be just about a circle. And this is where I burned a big pile of brush. And I'm thinking there's too much ash here and I made the soil a little too sterile. I need to get some of that manure side dress over here and see if I can help these plants because you go from real good plants to it just peters out to this area and then the plants start getting healthy and looking good again. More shade down here so they're a little stunted on this end anyway but that's not shade problem. I'm fixing drainage and it's still too wet so I've made a mess. Hey, if you need 20 tomato plants, plant 150. Yeah, why? Yeah, kind of like with my pepper plants that I finally got planted last night. I needed about six of each variety and I ended up with Oh, there are probably 75 pepper plants that got planted. Where I needed 18. Oh, glad I walked out here to make this video. I got in a hurry. and didn't cover these watermelon seeds up. I got the watermelon, not a lot. Of course, they don't put a lot of watermelon seeds in a packet. And I got a double row of um, okra that I just planted. And then I got about 20 feet of yellow squash and 20 feet of zucchini. And at the end of every row, I either throw some sweet basil seed, some cilantro seed, or some dill seed. At the end of this row, I threw a packet of dill seed on either end. I've got room for one more raised row here. And then we're into, well, that's gonna be a building and that's gonna be parking. So I can come to the tree and that's it. This started out to be, I was gonna have a small garden with five raised rows, yeah see how that worked out 
Something I'm not particularly impressed with, I had to get a new tiller. My old rear tine tiller is pretty much shot. And bought this at Rural King. They don't make the Sears tiller that I like anymore because, well, I weigh too much. This tiller's worth about $250 in my opinion. Wheels are too small. Tines, tines, I'm gonna fix the tines. They, they're just not right. Good power. It'll run away from you if you hit something solid. An old workhorse of the farm. The 2012 BX25D. It does everything. Well, up to a point. Here's the box blade I've been using to make between rows and drag the topsoil out. Couldn't find a better one, so I bought one of these King Clutters, which are, I don't know, King Clutter in my opinion is nothing but junk. This box blade, however, has been the exception to that until we did that. Caught a root and ripped the back of it out. I'm gonna have to heat that up, pound it back in, weld it up, put a piece of plate steel on it, weld it to the back. Uh, just don't use very substantial steel on these things. There are a couple other brands, including Kubota, that makes a better box blade. Coyote makes a good box blade. John Deere makes a good box blade. Bush Hog makes a good box blade. This is what I could get. It was... I was lucky to get it. Everybody 2020, 2021, 2022 buying everything. You couldn't get anything because of supply chain issues. Still really can't, but that's another matter. Anyway, I got this six foot one kind of Rural King in Harrisburg and it was the only one they had. And I can't complain. I built the big pond dam. I built the little pond dam. And I scraped, I don't know how many, tens of thousands of tons of topsoil out of the lake bed. So, I'm honest, I honestly expected that to happen within a hundred hours. And it's, I've got probably 650 hours on this now before it ripped out the back. Then we have one of my favorite places, the herb garden. Yes, there's my little spider wart down there doing its spider wart things. I love spider wart. This is my Greek oregano. Love that stuff. Had to replace my ba basil. Rosemary plants. They did die. I go real heavy on the Greek oregano, but I make a lot of Italian sauces and my sage plants, I thought they were dead. Most of them came back to life. Yes, I got a big old black ant hill. I got German thyme. Rosemary, I'm going to put over there. It's not a giant herb garden, but it has what I need, and I have another herb garden over by the machine shed with plants that do much better in full sun.
Anyway, this garden turned out a lot bigger than I planned on this year. Anyway, it's done. I just need to maintain it, do some more cultivating. Then I need to get back to making the firewood and I gotta get the concrete pad poured to set the sawmill up on. I'm gonna set it up. Oh, back here where all these logs are sitting. I'm gonna put it across here and build the drying curing shed and a cover for the mill head. That junk ass lifting engine just does not impress me. I'm, I don't know what to say about that piece of garbage. I was expecting a quality engine, not a not a no-name importer special. I don't know, they surprise me occasionally and run good, but as a general rule, not really. Yeah, I got lots of firewood to make for next year. I gotta fix my rock mess that I've made. I've just been pushing the wood up out of the way and you know, rock comes with it. I devoted all of last summer to building the ponds and lake and everything else kind of got minimally done, if done at all. Uh-oh, found a treasure. <clears throat> huh. That's one of the faucets from the original store, on farm store that burned back in 2012. I still find parts and pieces of it. Call this a mill house. It used to, sawmill used to be set up right beside here and I built it right off the mill with lumber as I milled it. My door warped, but anyway, that's kind of a little tool shed, garden shed, catch-all. Anyway, this is where we're at today. I'll probably build another raised bed, do some more scraping, and I still got, I just ran out of room. I still have, I don't know, 30 or so Goliath jalap jalapeno peppers left to plant. That I doubt I'm going to plant them anywhere because I've already planted 30 Goliath jalapeno peppers. I eat a lot of jalapeno peppers. Man, I can't eat that many. Anyway. We'll just call this a video.